Over the next five weeks, we're going to be talking all about journal activities. And this first week in the series, we're going to talk all about some really simple activities for beginners to uh, use journaling to learn languages. Um, so a really critical part of getting not quitting learning languages is um, seeing progress, obviously. And it can be really difficult to feel like you're progressing when you can't create with languages. And a lot of journaling activities kind of re can really require, um, in the traditional sense, can really require uh, being at the B level or the intermediate level where you can create with language. And this week we're gonna focus on a few simple little activities uh, for absolute beginners. So this first activity is uh, vocabulary columns. I don't really know what else to call it. It's really super simple. This is great for beginners. So if you wanna talk about something, you're gonna write down your the words that you want to learn how to say or, or practice. And um, if you see here, this is in French, there's some mistakes in there from uh, the stage I was at some spelling mistakes, but um, I don't worry too much about that because really as a beginner, you just want to get communicating. So I'd write down words. I wrote down a lot here. I would really recommend probably 10 um, sort of chunks words and phrases. Um, I would do this in probably no more than groups of, of 10. And you write down the words in one column. And then you either in your native language and then in the target language, you're going to write the equivalent. And you might even need to, you know, use some tools, look things up at this point and, and you study them. And then you turn your the column over. So basically, you're, after you've studied, you're going to write the words down again in English in another column without that first one that you did to refer to. Then you're going to turn it over and do the target language after you've studied again. It's really quick. Basically, by the time you've done both sides of the paper, you'll know all the words probably pretty well that you have there. So basically you're just going between your native language and your target language, and then, you know, using, studying what you're not getting and then filling in those gaps. And then you'll know the words. And it's a really simple activity, you know, do, do a kind of a theme a week. And speaking of those themes that you can do, um, I love, language for travel. And so here's some good examples, I think, of really useful chunks. So the in the activity that I did earlier, you I would, um, you know, I had some family in there, I, as I told you, I, it's a bit long, I would do it a bit shorter, I would do something, you know, 10, this might have about 15 words, I'm not quite sure, but they're all super, super, super useful. So, you know, bear that in mind as you as you do these activities. Here's another group of chunks of languages for um, for for travel and which is great for beginners, of course. And so in a journal, a great journaling activity is to sort of make your own phrase books almost because it's it's useful, it's relevant, it's active and the focus is all on getting getting communicating. So you can have your different journal activities where you're thinking about maybe your different situations or, or different things you would encounter during a trip. And you're you're collecting those phrases and you're sort of theming them yourself based on how you would use them. So, you know, Google Docs is a great place to do this. Um, I really love Google Docs for this reason because it has built in dictionary. So if you're missing a word, you can look it up. Of course, Google Translate, you know, there are definitely some things to be cautious about it with. But the great thing is that um, it's always scanning documents that were 
translated by human beings. So it's always, and it's always asking for feedback. So it's constantly getting better and better and better and better and better. The next activity I want to talk about are lists. So this is a great activity for beginners. Um, this is a shopping list I, I have in French. And basically it's a really great activity to build your vocabulary and you can do it on your own. So if you, you know, you've got a few minutes every day, you can make lists of different themes. This is a, just a shopping list, but your list can be anything. Your list can be things I like, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, they can be things you do every day, things that are in your house, things that you'd like to buy, right? Think of any themed list that, that you might want, that you might have. And what's great about it when you sort of centered around the task of something that you want to do, something that you want to accomplish, then you can find that, um, you know, you're going to start focusing on the language you want to learn on that real communicative task. So it's really useful and, and, and really helpful. So themed lists based on something you want to be able to do in the language. The next one are drawings. And this is great for absolute beginners. Um, that's a terrible drawing you see there that I made. And again, you can do it on your own. You can sit down, you can you can sketch out something, you can doodle, and then you can label all the parts. People who love to draw love this. I don't love to draw, but I do it because it's a great way to learn vocabulary. And basically you draw something out and you label it. So it could be a salad, it could be a body, a person, it could be a house, it could be really anything that you want it to be. Any set of nouns, so a great way to learn vocabulary on your own likes and dislikes. So I really love to, to do sort of sorting activities, you know, things I like, things I don't like, um, things I do every day, things I don't do every day. It's really great for beginners. And so theming your journal entries like that, if you think of, you know, two or three categories of sorting different things in a task, it can really help you journal. So another example here, okay, you have likes and dislikes. It could be activities, it could be things, it could be places, right? And you think about all the vocabulary that you would want to, to personalize that task. It could be, um, again, activities, it could be foods, it could be really anything. Um, another way that I would like to to use this is with um reading so you can organize things in reading so like things um things i liked about what i read things i i didn't like about what i read so then you've got some input and you've got some output there but really anything it could be fruits and vegetables and it's a great way to review vocabulary on your own and so as you make these lists you can you know start filling in your gaps. Uh, next week, we're going to talk a little bit more about beginning uh, journal activities. Until next time.